Matthew shared for leading us in worship this morning. Hasn't your heart been lifted already? We've received from him testimony, ministry, challenge for the Christmas month. All right. Well, it's so good again. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you being here this morning in God's house. Look forward to his continued blessings. We don't know what, what's out there ahead, but we're soon going to be out of this year. And uh, God gives us the privilege to continue to live and minister in 2019. I want to be there, don't you? And I'm sure the Lord will walk that path with us. I'm reading this morning in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1. Shouldn't be hard to find. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Familiar words to you this time of year. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 20. But while he, Joseph, thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, fear not to take to you Mary, your wife. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now this, all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. The prophet Isaiah saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Many people this time of year put several large gift boxes under their tree or near the front doors of their homes. Christmas wrapping all around them, decorated with pretty bows. Some of these folk, just to be safe, use empty boxes for this purpose. That way if a thief comes, slips into their house while they're gone, he's only stealing decorations. Empty boxes. Lots of fanfare on the outside, lots of beauty on the outside, but inside there is no value. Well, I wish this morning this, this was not so typical of so many people today to make sure they look their best and come to church on Sunday, and I like that part. Some bring the Bible, some even teach Sunday school class, and that's all good, but for some people, if we would peel away the wrapping and a bow, pretty bow, you wouldn't find a soul underneath that's happy in Jesus. You would find a restless soul. Outside beauty is not matched by a vibrant testimony of what God has done this week. That they've talked with him this morning. Jesus came to this world to make sure this wasn't necessary. Jesus is this morning the very essence of God. Came to the world, as we read here, to take away the sins of the world and reveal God in the God the Father in the flesh. And this is embodied in the name that we're going to look at, consider this morning, Emmanuel, which means God with us. This became fulfilled in Jesus. And as such, it's a bit of an extension of our Sunday school lesson this morning. Now notice first uh, that Jesus, or Emmanuel, had a name that came from heaven. The name Emmanuel was announced by God through the prophet Isaiah some 700 years before the event in Matthew 1. God with us was what that meant. God with us. It was a phenomenal concept. God would walk on this earth. And through the Holy Spirit, he would live in the heart of every believer. I hardly think, I don't think Isaiah grasped the full, far-reaching,
teaching consideration of this. What a manual really would mean. In a dream, the angel of the Lord came to Joseph to announce this event, the birth of Jesus, and it would not be merely the birth of a baby. It was, in reality, God becoming a baby. God came down into a not very clean, smelly, dirty cattle shelter. <coughs> Isaiah prophet, the prophet had announced in Isaiah 9, 6, years, centuries before, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. Now take note of that word given. You see, God the Son had existed long before this child was born. Mary gave birth to a child, but the child existed before she became pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So the Son was given. The son was given. Not merely born. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, we're given a conversation between God the Father and God the Son, talking about Jesus coming to earth as a man to do the Father's will. Hebrews 10, 5 and following. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Talk to the Father. But a body you prepared for me. Then I said, I come in the in the volume, in the scroll of the, it's written of me to do your will, oh God. But I also want to notice that not only Jesus had a name that was a given, came from heaven, he also was the display that came from heaven. The display of God himself. Jesus himself was God, but he also came to represent his Father. So we would know what God is like. That's been our theme for several weeks in looking at some of these names. Uh, uh, Jesus did the Father's will. Now Paul in Colossians 1.15 wrote that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Hebrews 1.3 Describe Jesus as the, the brightness, the radiance of God's glory and the express, the exact image of his person. John began his gospel with those familiar words, but so true. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh, she said, dwelt among us. A little further down in that passage, verse 18. And he has declared him. He has made God known. The word John was writing about was Jesus, of course. Jesus had a human body, and in ways that I can't fully understand, uh, he was not 50% God and 50% human. He was 100% God, and he was 100% human. One moment he was hungry because he was human. The next moment he fed 5,000 people because he was God. He could be thirsty because he was full of human and ask for a drink from the well. But he could walk on the water because he was full of God. Because he was full of human, he could grow in knowledge and experience uh, uh, obedience to his father but because he was God he also knew what people were thinking one day he suffered indescribable agony on the cross died because he was human but three days later he rose from the grave because he was God now Paul put it so well in Colossians 1.19 God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. So without Emmanuel, without Jesus, you and I would have no chance of understanding God. 
John 1, 18. No one has seen God at any time, but that's the verse I referred to a minute ago. Uh, no one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, the one and only Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. He has made Him known. What more do we need? How does God make Himself known? He makes Himself known through Emmanuel, God with us. Philip had been one of Jesus' disciples for quite a while, almost three years. And one day he came up with an interesting question and request to Jesus. John 14, he said, Jesus, show us the Father. That'll be enough for us. Jesus turned to him and said, that was a good request. It was a reasonable one, it would seem, but Jesus cleared up his misunderstanding very quickly. He said, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been with you for three years, such a long time, it's about three years. Anyone, Jesus said, who has seen me has seen the Father. And it seems to me this morning that you and I ought to be spending some time in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, doesn't it? Looking at Jesus and so that we can understand our fight. Jesus is a complete revelation of the Father. He's the display. He's the representation of the Father. That's why no one can get around Jesus and get to God. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's not politically correct today. Not too long ago, Evangelist Greg Larry, some of you may have heard him, radio, or he's on the radio station, and 760 and the like, I think. And he had a crusade in Southern California, local evangelistic crusade, that's all it was, bring people to Jesus Christ. In California. But the billboards had him holding, holding the Bible and some local protesters said that that's bold. That's offensive. Now my mind says, not in any rational sense, but you see it's a spiritual battle. It's an offense of Jesus who was between two thieves and each of them made different decisions, didn't they? Didn't he? That's the world that we live in today. Christian educator and leader, publisher, admired his writings, what he's doing for the Lord. He was given a request, uh, went to a civic organization and asked to pray. And I've done some things similar to that in past years occasionally. And they said, well, don't pray in Jesus' name. It's good to offend some people. And he gave a good answer. He said, so to whom exactly would you prefer that this prayer be addressed? I think that's a good answer. I don't know what the response was. But you see, I wonder if some people would prefer that you address your prayer to the devil rather than Christ because Christ separates people, doesn't he? Those who receive and those who reject. He's God. None of the political correctness this morning lessens the truth. Jesus is Emmanuel. He is with us this morning. But further this morning, uh, Notice that Jesus, Emmanuel, is the, his name came from heaven, he is, his, he, his, the display came from heaven, but he is also a gift that came from heaven. The best gift you can receive at Christmas time. Sometimes people give their children names that sound nice. That just sound nice. You know, they don't, they don't care so much what the name means, don't even look it up. You know, uh, Garrett, maybe that just sounds kind of easy I have to say. David, David, Alina, Lisa, they almost, almost are really close. You know, I don't know how you keep getting those mixed up. 
But, you know, they sound nice. They're cute. But in the Bible times, names were given to people because they meant something. They didn't care what they sound like. Maybe you figured that out when you read some of the hard names in the Bible. They don't, they don't roll off your tongue very easily. But they had meaning. Uh, and the baby Jesus, uh, uh, angel visited Mary, tells the birth of Messiah. He instructed Mary to call the baby Jesus. The story is in, is in Luke. We read Joseph's part of it. But, so that name means that Jesus would save his people from their sins. Just what the angel told, told Joseph. Then Jesus means the Lord is salvation. But Jesus said other names are well. Uh, other names as well. Names you don't wouldn't use in conversation, but they're descriptive names. God gave them to Isaiah, the prophet, many centuries ago. Oh, oh, wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God. His name, yes. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Well, you and I need a wonderful counselor this morning because we need some wisdom from heaven. Did you know that? You can bring all your questions to him. You can bring your hang-ups to him. The riddles of life you can't understand. And there are lots of them I can't understand. I can't figure them out. Go to a human counselor and every one of them, if they're honest, we're going to tell you that well, I believe they can be a tremendous help, but every one of them are going to say that sometimes they're not going to get hit the bullseye 100% of the time. They're human. No matter how hard we try. Jesus has unlimited resources and experiences walking the same path you're walking today. Did you hear Sherry's testimony? His resources are not limited. Go way past $6,000 sometimes, Right? Well, that was a few years ago, and that probably meant a little more than it did today, but you see, he meant the same problems you're meeting today, and walking the same paths you're walking today, and facing the same trials and temptations you're meeting today. Who could be better qualified? He's your counselor. He, he's also a mighty God, because you and I need heaven's power. Do you realize that? To lift us out of the that the transcend us beyond some of the some of the problems that that we meet, some of the daily grind that we face. One kind of, of power we need is overcome our fears. You know, and I have valuations come up and the like, and you know, I mean, I'm older than some of you. Uh, I still feel a little bit of a, a fear. You go to the doctor and you feel a little a little uncertainty. There and do some tests like uh, some of you do, and a little uncertainty there. Uh, no wonder Mary had some fear. An angel came to her and told her she was highly favored of God, would soon be pregnant with without human male assistance, and her child would be given King David's throne, and a kingdom would last forever, and he would be God's son. No wonder she was a little fearful. Angel said, Fear not. First words he said, Hey, fear not. Do you need power to overcome fear this morning? I do. Jesus had power to raise a dead man from the grave, but he also had personal power to keep himself from racing ahead of God's plan. Oh, that's the power that I need. Sometimes I just want to do it. I want to fix it. I want to get it right. And I go too fast. And sometimes come out on the losing end sure. Jesus would not race ahead to Lazarus' sickness, but it wasn't God's, because it wasn't God's time. He had power and control and, and wisdom with his power to restore life, and he finally came there and he brought the dead men back to life, but it was a demonstration of God's power that God wanted the world to see. Experience. Uh, Jesus had power to turn some dry bread, sardines, and a little hungry boy willingly gave him up. They feed 6,000 people, 5,000 people plus. 
women and children uh, additional. Uh, Jesus had the power to calm the sea just by saying, stand still. Whatever's coming to you may be hard. It may be a habit of life. It may be exasperating. It may be overwhelming. But the good news is that you and I can defeat our fears through the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus is also the everlasting Father because you and I need eternal life, don't we? He came as a Savior to rescue us. Um... Everlasting means forever. No beginning, no end. Uh, that's a bit mind-numbing for us. Some folks have just given up and concluded that evolution is the answer. Well, let me tell you, as Ron has said so well in his little book, you don't get something out of nothing. They go back to the pinpoint of the pinpoint of the pinpoint of the pinpoint. <laughs> and all these calculations, and I've looked at some of those calculations, they have to, they have to go in such... Fine-tuned detail as far as time and and conditions and everything. But where did the pinpoint come from? Where did the pinpoint come? From? That's the question he asked in his book. They don't have an answer to that. You see, God transcended time. He transcended space. He transcended it all to make Himself known. We need a, a savior. Maybe someone's efforts to rescue themselves could come up this high. Maybe somebody else's condition, uh, efforts to rescue themselves could, could let them swim in the ocean in a sinking ship a little bit longer. Maybe an excellent swimmer could swim for several hours. But you know, if the ships, if, the, if you don't get rescued out there and the ship going down, they'll all drown. They'll all drown. You're not even a savior. We need an eternal savior. Father, whose resources vastly exceed anything we have. And God the Father placed his credibility in his Son. And certainly this morning, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And you and I need a Prince. We need a Prince who could overcome the Prince of this world and defeat all of the disorder and restlessness and confusion and destruction and hopelessness that he has been disseminating since he was cast out of heaven. We need a prince bigger than he is in this world. A prince, a possession, a prince of peace. Bring that peace right into our heart. Mary, many people don't understand peace. Uh, Bible writer, Bible writer, Jesus, half-brother James, understood something about it. He said, what causes fights and quarrels among you? And that's between people and families and nations. What causes these fights? Don't they come from the desires of battle within you? You desire, but you don't have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Three does sometimes in James 4. I don't think anybody can say any better, do you? In Jesus, we have an alternative to this fight. Paul wrote Philippians 4 that I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, and that's Kansas, isn't it? Missouri, right? Some of us. Well, that means conditions and circumstances. I've learned to be content. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me he went on to say yeah we can manage through Christ the world rages Mary knew that she would be ostracized and criticized and, and, and humiliated and condemned and gossiped about but no one could take away the son of God that was within her her secret was like Paul to submit was to submit to the prince, the prince of peace. That transcends any understanding we have, just beyond our understanding. But you have a man who living with you this morning. Well, that's the greatest treasure I could, I could hope on anybody at Christmas time. I like the, the song. The songwriter says, Lord, I'm in your presence. 
for Christmas. Yes! I want your presence for Christmas. I long to feel your spirit speaking peace to my heart. Of all the gifts I may receive, there's only one I really need. And it's your presence. Your presence for Christmas. My prayer is that that's what you will have. That's why Jesus came. Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts before you this morning, thanking you for the gift, not only your name that means the Lord is salvation, the display of God himself, and helps us understand God, also the marvelous gift he brought. Pray that there would not be a single one of us here who has not had that gift or that experience of joy of Jesus Christ living inside our lives. Helping us to overcome the bitterness of this world and bitterness of life sometimes around us. But while this world rages, we can have sweetness of your presence. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your help today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, um, yeah. if anybody wants to watch any of these videos and um, testimonies, uh, you can go to my YouTube um, or I'll send you a link. Text me and I'll send you a link because I get upload them on YouTube. Okay, okay. Thank you. Good deal. I appreciate it.